Okay, I've had several people that's asked me my process on what I do to make milk, or I mean to make butter. So what I have is raw cow's milk. I have my own dairy cows, and so I milk every day. This is strictly cream. So I've already started. I had two of these jars, so that's one gallon. Each jar is a half gallon. Um, and this is cream that has been separated through a milk separator so not just let settle to the top um, this is really thick cream that's used from my separator which is sitting right there it's all put up right now i'll have a separate video on um, how the milk separator works so i don't have anybody to video for me so i apologize i'll be doing this one handed so i've already started i like to do just a half a gallon at a time otherwise it tends to make too big of a mess so this is just a regular KitchenAid mixer with a whisk attachment um, this is what is leftover buttermilk from the first half gallon. I have a crock bowl and a wooden butter spoon that I use along with just a little strainer. And then this is the butter from the first half gallon. And it wasn't a full half gallon, but so that you'll get an idea like that's a pretty good amount compared to my hand. It's a big bowl. So to start, I have to get this into my mixer bowl. And this is very thick stuff, so I'll have to pause because you can tell when I go to pour it, not much comes out. So I'm going to pause and get this into the bowl. Okay, so after using a spatula to get that thick cream in here, put on my whisk attachment, and I start slow. Now this cream is cold. Some people say they prefer room temperature, whatever. Um, this is cold straight out of the fridge. And then this cream is several days old. From my experience, it seems like it works better turning into butter. Um, if it's been aged just a little bit. So I use a towel because this tends to get a little bit messy. But this usually only takes um, a couple minutes. I start out slow and I slowly work my speed up. That, just that way it doesn't splash all over the place. And I let it kind of go at this speed until, see how it's kind of splashing up on the sides? It'll quit doing that once it gets to where it starts to consolidate some. So what it'll do first is it'll turn it into whipped cream. Um, so it'll just get real light and fluffy and you can stop there and add some sugar and make homemade whipped cream. Um, or you can kick it up to speed and whisk it on high speed to where it actually start to separate. So I won't film this whole process because this does take just two or three minutes. So I'm gonna pause this until we get closer to the whipped cream stage. Okay, so I poured a little bit back into my jar because I couldn't get the speed high enough to really whisk this without it slopping everywhere. So poured about half back into my jar and you can tell after just a minute of whisking that it's already starting to get to where it's got peaks in it, where it's getting kind of fluffy. So I'm going to keep up in my speed. And you can tell it's starting to really get... peaks in it so right now is where you could stop and you would have whipped cream I kick it up some more starting to separate. Slow it down just a little bit, that way it starts to separate from the buttermilk. Okay, now it's starting to get real sloppy, so it's separated. Okay, so there you have butter and buttermilk. So what I do is I work small batches at a time because that seems to work better. Okay, so this is what just came off the whisk. So I just work this around and you squeeze it against the side of the bowl. And the juice that comes out is the buttermilk. 
And so the cleaner your butter is, the longer it will last. And so I pour the buttermilk into my jar because I keep that for buttermilk biscuits or whatever else you want to make with it. And just work this around until you get the majority of it squeezed out. seems to work better in smaller batches like this otherwise you have a huge wad of butter and it's hard to get it completely clean okay so once I got it where the majority of the buttermilk is out I'll put it in a different bowl and then this bowl needs to be washed before it's ready to put in a jar and that's where you wash it with cold water you do essentially the same thing you just rinse around the cold water and keep dumping it out to where until the water is about clear and then I put it into glass mason jars so that is pretty well the process only took me about 10 minutes to get from the milk stage to the butter stage and then this working the butter process takes a little bit longer but I'll show you uh, the finished product here in a minute Okay, so this is all of the butter, and I'm washing it now. So the colder the water that you use, the better. I use just tap water um, out of the well, and it's usually relatively cold. If you prefer to use ice water, you can do that. Um, and so I just get some water in there. And this process takes a while because you have to go through and really wash it. See how that water gets kind of a milky white color? It's getting all the excess buttermilk out of the butter. And the more clean that this butter is, the longer it will last in the fridge. I'm messy when I do this, especially with a big group. If I always do it in the sink, it seems to work a little bit better for me. Smaller batches aren't as big of a deal. So I'll go through and get this butter washed out. And then I like to add a little bit of olive oil and sea salt to it just for flavor and the olive oil um, makes it a little bit more spreadable because uh, when raw butter like this gets cold it's very hard so it doesn't spread like margarine does or something that you buy in the store so the olive oil helps do that um, not everybody adds that it's kind of your own preference but I like to add just a little bit um, for flavor and for spreadability okay so the water now after I've been rinsing it is pretty clear so I dump out the rest of the water and then the next process here is to squeeze the water out, the excess water that you've put into it. So if you just work it around, you can tell the water tends to form at the bottom of the bowl and I just keep dumping it until it's mostly just butter as you work around in there. And then I add my sea salt and my oil and I put it in a jar and so I'll show you how much butter we've gotten out of a gallon of milk. Okay, this is the finished product of how much butter I got and how much buttermilk I got left over from a gallon of raw cow's milk. So the butter I've had in the fridge for up to a month at a time and it was still good. I've never had it last more than a month because it's always gone before then. Um, I had a jar that got pushed to the back one time that I found was a month old and was still perfectly good. The buttermilk usually only lasts like a week or two um, in the fridge before it starts to turn. So that's what I got for today.